The question has been answered. The Dodgers are the best team in baseball. Without a doubt. Hey guys, welcome to the World Series edition of Lab Talk. Mason, the Yankees suck. Yeah, um, I was hoping for the sweep. I called Dodgers in six. It only took five, so wham. Sucks to suck. You nice fifth inning there. You love to see the Dodgers celebrate yeah. in front of the Yankee fans. Oh, yeah. Nothing better than shutting up 55,000 New Yorkers. Yes. The Dodgers did just that. Terrible, terrible, terrible place. Terrible place. Terrible. Not, not, not the best place. Embarrassing. Game one, the Yankees looked like they were going to get off to a hot start in this one. Yeah. That was a tough one. That was a really back and forth match. Um, I mean, both starting pitchers were just awesome in that game. It was really hard to put any runs on the board. The fact that we got on the board first, and then of course Stanton has his, you know, postseason Hall of Fame moments. Of course, good job, buddy. But um, yeah, he golfed that one. We out there. What did Joe say? Scraping the sky. He gets so excited. Skyscraper. He gets so excited. The skyscraper. Um, yeah, and then it goes extras and. Jazz is really tough on the bases. Um, just just a lot of sweet moments. And then, of course, the moment to end all moments. Honestly, that is our generation's Kirk Gibson moment. Without a doubt. I told you a week before it happened. Yes. I wish I would have recorded it. I said awesome. Freddie Freeman's going to hit a walk-off home run game one. He did it. Kirk Gibson style. Bum ankle and all. Yeah. He hits the grand slam. Set the tone for this whole series. Oh. Freddie, I mean, he's already got a Hall of Fame resume building up, and he just adds to it here. No. He took it to another level this October. He really did. I mean, we'll, we'll get into the whole series, but he ends up winning the MVP, as you all know. Just, I mean, that moment really set us up to win the next two games. Would we win the series? Regardless, yes. But that that moment just really, really, like, put a whole bunch of wind in our sails, and we just took off. I mean, the fact that... People were saying the Yankees were going to beat us in five or six games. It's ridiculous. We'll, we'll get into it, but I mean, that that first game in particular that we're talking about, what a moment. I mean, what a moment. What a moment. Went into game two, Yamamoto was lights out in this one. That's why you pay him $300 million. There you go. People, I mean, people were talking after the first start he had mm -hmm. in Korea. Oh, oh, wasted money, bad contract. And then Yamamoto goes on to have yeah. an injury-filled season, but still put up a three ERA yep. over the long haul. He had that rough start against San Diego the first time mm -hmm. in the NLDS, but was lights out after that. And more of the same here in Game 2 of the World Series. More of the same. I mean, how would you feel having signed the biggest contract for any pitcher in, major, in MLB history? Um, you're pitching in front of mostly fans of hometown because I mean South Korea is not very far from Japan there was a lot of people a lot of people at that game from Japan in particular but of course South Korea who do you think they're rooting for Otani Yamamoto of course homegrown and then you got um, pitching against San Diego who in my opinion was I mean on paper they were the favorite to win that series by far I mean it, it you could say it was close it wasn't really that close people more often than not were saying San Diego is gonna beat that series was I a little afraid? I'll never admit that. But yeah, it was a tough series. It was a tough series. So the fact that he's able to come out and yeah, he give up a three spot, but then just pitch around that. It was a that was a really good game too. I mean, we're talking all the way. I, I hate that we're kind of jumping around here, but what a moment for Yoshi to come in and just step up when he needed this game, game two. So good. Chef's kiss. No. Got a little scary there in the ninth. Blake Trinan, yeah. not as locked down as he has been the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Dodgers getting the job done. Vesia coming in, getting the one-out save. One pitch. The first one-out save in World Series history. Was it really? It was. Mm -hmm. Freddie with the first walk-off Grand Slam in World Series history. The Dodgers were making history. Yeah, in this World Series in particular. But then you go back to just postseason journal. We, had, we tied for the most consecutive scoreless innings. I mean... People were, were, you know, we were not favorited because we only had three. We had three starting pitchers coming into the postseason. Used them, used the bullpen to perfection. Could I, I mean, 
Could you have been better? Sure, why not? Still the best. Better than everyone. And the bullpen. So good. We talked crap about the bullpen all year. We did. The first half of the season, they were atrocious. Terrible. You had a rotating Terrible. door of guys coming in. Yeah. They really. And well, a lot of them were hurt, uh, especially the high leverage arms. They were they were not, you know, pinpointing. They were just kind of just out there to see. Oh, let's see if we can come back from injury. And then you know what? You get Bruce Straw trying. I mean, all these guys they were just hurt for most of the time. So the, by by the time they come back for the postseason, they were just locked in. The last month and a half, and then postseason locked in, locked in, locked in. We needed it. We needed it. We would not have won that. We would not have been out of San Diego without them. We would have been nearly swept again. So the fact that we were able to beat San Diego and get to this point, I mean, we'll talk about it. I'll bring it up. But the Yankees had the had the easy route. You're facing the NL Central two rounds in a row, and then you're facing, in my opinion, and I think you agree with this. Um, right now, the NL West is the best division in baseball. You definitely got three really good teams mm -hmm. there, top heavy with the Dodgers, yeah. Padres, and D-backs in that order. In that, in that order. order. Giants, uh, they, they play baseball also. And then <laughs> the Rockies, um, they just kind of show up because they have to. Yeah, they get paid to show up. I'm but, sure so I don't get fined. But we knew... <laughs> But we knew once the Dodgers got past the Padres, that was it. I mean, the Mets were red hot, uh, but no. once you got through that Padres series, that felt more like a World Series it than really this did. World Series did. It really did. And and the Mets series, I think, was um, still a strong series. But, I mean, once we got there, I thought, okay, as long as we can pitch around Soto and Stanton, Judge couldn't hit a, the brown side of a barn, and everybody else couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. It was going to just be an—I don't want to say easy, but not that competitive of a series. Judge, we were right. Couldn't hit the ground if he jumped off a building. He couldn't do it. It just, just spin, 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 swing, 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 miss, miss, miss. Easy, easy peasy. Dodgers going up two games to nothing. Freddie Freeman, a home run in game one, home run in game two. What do you think he does in game three? Um, I mean, if I had to guess without knowing what's going to happen, hit a home run. He absolutely did, and it only took <laughs> one at bat to do it. Dodgers oh jumping God. ahead two to nothing in the first. Quick and in New York, shut him up. Fifty-six thousand pouting, and you were wondering what Bueller was going to do. He's been your big game pitcher since he got to the show. Did he step up? And he absolutely stepped oh, up. We weren't up. sure what he was going to do. He's dealt with injuries. He didn't look like himself, mm -hmm. didn't have the same rise on that fastball, didn't have the same spin on his breaking stuff. Until this game. Until this game. It, it. I, I texted you, you might have texted me, I can't remember who it was. After the first couple innings, you said, this is a yeah. different Bueller. I said, this is Bueller of old. His fastball was not only hitting 96 cons consistently, it was rising. I don't know if he just said, you know what, I feel good, I'm not going to think about it, I'm just going to go out there and pitch. In the post-game interview, he said... This, this is, you know, I've, I've been pitching how I used to in college because he wasn't throwing 98, 99 until after that first Tommy John, after he went pro. So he said, this is how I used to pitch in college, obviously having better stuff, but he, I'm so happy he came back when he did to have all those bad, let's say, starts underneath his belt so he can just come out and shove in the postseason. I, because of this performance, and then of course, game five we'll get to, they need to sign him again. Do I think he needs to be a long-term deal? No, he's got two Tommy Johns, and I don't think he's gonna get that in the open market, but he deserves to come back and give us one year, see what you got, go from there. He earned it. We call him BDB for a Shoved. reason. We'll let shoved. you figure out what that BDB stands for. Shoved. Uh, but he absolutely shoved in this one. So good. Getting out to a commanding three games to nothing lead. We know only one team out of 40 instances that made a comeback. 3-0. That Smell was sweet. when the Red Sox did it back in 04 against who? Uh, the Yankees. The Yankees. Terrible. Terrible. And so, of course, here comes the storylines. Oh, the Yankees don't That's count them out you, yet. They're going to come hear. back. That's all you're, you hear. You're at all the analysts. The Yankees are going to come back. They're going to be the first team to ever do it in the World Series. I swear, everybody, everybody loves the Yankees. Everybody who's got to write about it is from New York. He's got to write about it. No. Not going to happen. I don't care how much you like them. They're a non-fundamental team. They don't do the little things right, and it blows up in your face. Obvious. We're not there yet. Sorry. 
Game four, and the Yankee fans got a little antsy in their pantsy. First World Series <clears throat> home games <clears throat> since 2009. Terrible. And uh, that's, that's a terrible team. Mookie goes into the, the stands to make a play. What happened next? Uh, then you got Big Joe Schmo over here, Mr. Greaseball, grabbing his glue, trying to throw the ball. And he's like, this is, this is my side. I can do whatever I want to any player when it's on my side. Idiot. The ball, I mean, he, that's the ball literally is in his glove. It's in his glove, and he's trying to rip it out. What an idiot, Mr. And, Double Chin. And then you got his friend grabbing grabbing the wrist. That was ridiculous. I'm glad. Well, I'm glad they got kicked out. They should have been banned for life. I, you you could argue that. Life Maybe in, that was a little life hard. in prison. <laughs> they definitely should have been banned for. I, I think at least the next season, if not more, ju at least just from Yankee Stadium. The fact that they didn't do it because I think they're uh, season ticket holders, so obviously they are they're they pay big bucks. Revoked. Um, and secondly, I think to people in New York, that wasn't that big of a deal. Now, if it happened to... They liked it. If it happened to Judge or any other player, oh, you would not have heard the end of it. But you're not going to hear that, you know, with a player playing in L.A. Are you going to get trash thrown on the field for, you know, shaking everything at him? Yeah, they're going to throw some stuff at you. But we're not going to grab you and try to rip the ball out of your glove like some Neanderthal. Idiot. Idiot, idiot, idiot. So I think that was your atypical Yankees fan who's just pissed off all the time that it's so cold and the Yankees are losing and I'm so mad. And then you just got to assault a player. Idiot. Get him out of here. Get him out of Get here. Get him out of here. But, you know, things started turning the Yankees' way. They had a couple big innings. Yeah. Yeah, that grand slam off of Daniel Hudson, who had a rare bad outing for him by but, his standards. But of course, of course, he's you know the unofficial leader. He's kind of that you know he is that veteran arm in that bullpen. But what's funny is he was not healthy. And of course, you should capitalize on a non-healthy player pitching. But I don't know if you heard, but he was not healthy for this start, for this appearance, and for the next one because when he and Bueller were warming up to close out Game Five. Um, in the post-game interview, he said, if Doc brought me in, man, I was going to blow up my left arm because I was hurting. Of course, you don't hear that. So, I mean, good for him. What a way to go out on top as a champion. I'm going to miss you, Huddy, but you know what? Good job all year. Yankees going into game five with lots of momentum. Yeah. Uh, but not enough. They jumped out early. They did. They got to oh Jack. My, oh, my gosh. But the Dodgers are able to battle back in that mm -hmm. fifth. They capitalize on big mistakes. It started with Judge dropping that ball in center field. His first error of the season, regular or postseason. First error of the year. After he hits a home run, too, he's starting to feel good about himself oh, he had again. Oh, yeah, that amazing catch over in left center. Great center. catch. That was a wonderful Great catch. Though. I'm surprised that wall was still standing. 280, six foot ten, running at you. That's a big dude. That's a big boy. That's a big dude, but unfortunately, the big dude couldn't make the big play. It was really oh, an easy play. It was right at him. Took his eyes off it, yep. trying to uh, backdoor Kike at first. Yeah. Uh, but then the Dodgers capitalized. He then had that ground ball to short. Volpe tries to go to Jazz at third. Goes in between Kike's legs, Liked bounces it. away. And then uh, the Dodgers just capitalizing. Freddie Freeman, mm -hmm. the professional, oh. taking that ball up the middle. And that ball was inside. I don't know if you noticed, but... Three out of the four home runs were pitches inside. And one of them was kind of a backdoor slider and just hung it. So, but I mean, every almost every single hit that he had in this series was an inside pitch. Whether it was on purpose or mistake, he he smacked it. So, good for you, Fred. Don't pitch Freddie in. They were trying to stay away no. that hole at bat. Yeah. The one time they tried to switch it up and go inside, single up the middle. Yep. Teo tying it up at five. The Yankees taking the lead, going up six to five, and then the Dodgers doing what it takes. Absolutely. Regain the lead, seven to six. On two sack flies. Two sack flies. That's what you gotta do. Runner on third, less than two outs, put it in the outfield. Make them make a play. And they couldn't. And then it got real scary, the bottom of the eighth, trying in on the bump. Uh, oh. And Doc Roberts going out there, you thought he might pull him. Mm -hmm. He takes one look at him, he says, you're my guy, slaps him on the chest, lets him finish the inning. You gotta love it. Listen, that in that situation, six, seven years ago, Doc would have pulled him. Yep. But he has matured as a manager. Was he always perfect? Nobody is. Was, I mean, and, and, and my 
non-professional opinion, uh, has made a lot of mistakes, especially in the postseason. That was by far, this entire postseason, was by far his best, best managerial performance his entire career as a Dodger manager. He should go down as, well, first of all, Hall of Fame manager, having won two World Series now, but also should go down as one of, if not the best Dodger managers of all time. He's right up there with Tommy. People oh, might not just, want to hear that. No. Uh, he's got two. Lasorda gets a lot of love. Yeah. We need to give should. a little love to Dave Roberts. Yep. Um, he's won two World Series. Should have been yep. three. Should be three. Um, and, you know, like you said, he's not perfect, but mm -hmm. the way he managed this team with all the injuries, the Throughout way the he year, managed the goodness. bullpen in this postseason, um, you got to give props to Dave Roberts. Absolutely. I don't care if you don't like him. He, he earned himself four more years. Uh, I agree. Um, I think he still has at least another year on his contract. Right? I think he's got one more year. Give him some more. Put him back. I mean, he, he it's not just about what he does on the field. It's what he does off the field. He keeps that clubhouse, you know, calm, cool, and collective. They really, really know how to make the ball club about winning and not about individuality. They know what to do. Doc can steer that ship with all those stars. Leave the ego at the door. You know what? He's the guy that I want managing this team. What a job he did in that moment too. Going back to that. Leave Trinan in, backdoor big whooper duper to get Rizzo, huge pitch. Such a moment, good job. And then he goes to Bueller, his oh. first save opportunity. Perfect. And he absolutely locks it down, BDB. He's you, the guy. You figure out what that stands for. He, he's the guy. Um, his World Series career ERA is sub 0.5. Wow. Wow. It's 0.4 something. I mean, it's up there with, um, now he doesn't have the minimum, I think 20. I think he's got a minimum of like 15 or 16 innings pitched or whatever in the World Series. Sub 0 0.5 ERA. Really good. So, I mean, he's the guy. He's the guy you want for those big moments. He's always stepped up. Bring him back. Just, I mean, the fact that we're going to have so many guys, we'll get into it. It should be a six-man rotation, which helps Yoshi anyway. We have too many arms to just do only five. So, get them all in. So, Dodgers winning their eighth franchise World Series. Eight. Eight. We're tied with the Giants. Uh, so, the Dodgers, the best team in baseball, undisputed. 2020, 2020 2024. We're going to need a new banner. we got to get a new one. We've got 2020 up here. we got to add 2024. Time for a new banner. Got to get one. Um, it was a, an awesome season. This is so a, a great group. Yeah. The Dodger fans finally get a parade. And what well a moment, deserved. What a moment that was. I mean, they, they I think, predict, predicted probably 2 million. I think over 2 million ended up showing up. Wow. It was massive. That's insane. Massive, massive parade. Huge, huge, huge parade. I heard it smelled like beer. Oh. I heard it smelled like weed. And I heard it smelled like feces, Los Angeles. Yeah, LA. There you go. <laughs> that part. <laughs> uh, but... A huge win, a huge season. Yeah, what a moment. Let's carry it into next year. Guys, it's already time to talk about off-season moves. Hey, hey. We're already there. Why not? Mason, what do you want to see the Dodgers do this off-season? Um, there's all this talk about, you know, trying to go after Juan Soto. Do I think they'll dabble? Yeah, they're going to be interested, see what's going on, see what the market holds. But you know what? I just want Otani in the lineup. I want Mookie. I want Mookie leading off again. I think Otani needs to bat third and get yep. people on base. So no batting order in particular, but keep Mookie, Freddie, Otani at, uh, at the top. You need to sign Teo. That's my Bring him thing. back. Bring him back on a three, four-year deal, maybe three-year, and then a fourth-year option. He should get $25 million. So three, sign him for a three-year, $75 million deal. Bring him back. He's your guy. Fan favorite. He wants to come back. Not a lot of leverage in that by saying that, but you know what? He doesn't care. He wants to be back. He wants to win. Uh, Flaherty, same thing. He says he wants to be back. Sign him back. He wants to be here. He loves it here. He's from here. He'll probably sign a semi-team-friendly deal if you offer it. He'll probably take it. So get him back. Um, otherwise, get some more tar starting pitching. Build up that bullpen. Let Soto go. I do not care. This lineup is stacked enough. I mean, you get to keep talking about it. Let Muncy go. Taylor sucks. He needs to walk a long time ago. Bye. Bye. That's why you get Edmund back. Um, I would take Taylor over Muncy. You'd like to have both, but if you had to pick one because of payroll and this and that, Keep tail, let months ago. 
I'd like to see them trade Muncy. No offense, Max, you had a great NLCS. Yeah. Ofer in the World Series. Ofer 16. Ugh. 17 or 18, Ugh. which is terrible. Um, I, I would trade Muncy, maybe pick up a couple bullpen arms yeah. in a trade, mm -hmm. and bring in Willie Adonis. Either, yeah, either need a big shortstop. Let let Rojas move over to third and mm -hmm. play a little third, or keep Rojas an outstanding shortstop over there at short, and see if Willie Adams is willing to play third for this team. Yeah. And if he's not, I mean, he seems like a team kind of guy. He he just wants to win. He's he's the kind of guy where he's going to play. I mean, he's been on you know some postseason runs with the Brewers, and and you know what, his numbers stack up. But uh, oh, and with the Rays, he was the final out of that 2020 World Series. Yeah. I forget about that. Huh? There you go. Yeah. Um, I think he needs, he's a team guy. He needs to stay at short. I, I'm okay with moving Miguel over because he, I mean, he's just not fast. He still has the glove. He doesn't have the kind of range that I think Adamas has. But you know what? I think when it's all said and done, Miggy just wants to win. He just wants to play. So put him at third. He'll be fine. Keep Lux at second. Edvin, stick him wherever he wants. Stick, make him your starting center fielder. I'm okay with that. Um, Teo, keep him in left. Sign Teo. Sign Teo. Sign Teo. That's my biggest thing. Sign Teo. Bring back Flaherty. Sign more pitchers, bullpen and starters. Um, Kershaw's going to have surgery, so I mean, he's not going to be available till maybe mid-season again, maybe hopefully a little bit before June. But you're going to have a lot of pitchers coming back from Tommy John. Hopefully they pan out. You never know. So you can't just rely on that. Speaking of pitchers, we got some big arms on the free agent market. You got Corbin Burns. Ooh. Blake Snell opted out of his contract with the Giants. He He's won't on want the market. To. He does not like the Dodgers. He doesn't like the Dodgers. You never know. But if he wants to win, he should come to the Dodgers. That's what I'm excited about. Max Free. Yes. He received a qualifying offer from the Braves. Turn that down. But um, if if you want a big lefty in your rotation, Max Freed is a guy who has pitched in big ball games. Yes. He's been there before. And he's got a lot of spin on that curve. He's got like six or seven pitches, too. And he's only 31. Sign him to a three or four, maybe. I don't think he's worth more than that. Maybe a four-year deal. Maybe five, see how it goes. You've if also got uh, Nate Eovaldi opted out of his contract with the Rangers. That's he's a, a big nice, game pitcher. That, he is also a big game pitcher. I mean, the fact that he's 35, kind of scary. But you know what? He's got at least another good, I think, two, maybe a third-year option. I like that. Good, good for two more years. So, at the end of the day, bring back Teo, bring back Jack. Jack wants to be back. Yeah, um, bring Jack back. See what situation you've got with your pitchers coming back. But go yeah. out and get some arms. Mm -hmm. Maybe get rid of Muncie. Definitely okay, get yeah. rid of Chris Taylor. Uh, he's and, just a waste. Um, to, I mean, they have $50 million coming off the books. Um, and the fact that you also don't have to pay another $68 million to Otani because of just, you know, his team... Team friendly. He just wants to win. You know what his comments were actually after the World Series? Nine more. Let's do nine more. Let's do nine more. Why not? I mean, you win it the first year. They're going to come back even better uh, starting pitching wise and, and relief pitching wise because, I mean, everybody's going to be healthy day one. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this next year. Can't wait. I can because we just won. Can't wait for next year. So the Dodgers are in a really good spot. It feels yeah. good to be a Dodger fan, and it's going to feel good for a while. They won yes. the World Series, and um, you know, to everybody else, there's always next year. Always next year. A very happy podcast, guys. Yes. If you like what we're doing here on Lab Talk, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. As always, let's go Dodgers. Adios. Ooh, ooh.